Well, we just started here last fall, unfortunately just before COVID, but uh, really took a liking to it. Um, it's it's a great way to meet new people, and it's a wonderful. It's tennis for old people. It's uh, it's a really nice sport. Uh, there's uh, lots of activity in it, more so than I thought, which is good. I had a friend that uh, I played tennis with, and she introduced me to the game. She played it down in Mexico, and. Uh, she introduced me to it and uh, I don't play tennis anymore. I only play pickleball. Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us at this episode of Faces of Calgary Sport, uh, hosted by Sport Calgary. I'm Katrina LeMay Doan. I'm president and CEO of Sport Calgary. And um, yes, today this is our third episode of Faces of Calgary Sport. And today we're talking pickleball and uh, tons of registrations, tons of interest in this, uh, I'm going to say new and exciting sport, but it's probably not that new a sport. Uh, we have a great panel, and um, just before I introduce our panel, I like to always give everybody a little breakdown of our audience of the, registr of the registrants, just to sort of give everybody an idea on who um, has logged on. So about just over 40% uh, have heard of the sport and seen pictures, but know nothing about the sport. Um, only about 1% have actually watched it uh, on TV or online. Um, just over 50% have tried out the sport and actively take part in the sport. Um, I'm going to put myself in that category. I don't know if I do anything right, uh, but I'm going to put myself in that category. So uh, let's introduce the panel that we have. Uh, first, we have Beverly Walker, who started playing pickleball on an extended visit to Arizona in 2011. So when I'm saying it's a new sport, it's been around for a while. Uh, she's been playing ever since. She's founder of the Calgary Pickleball Club. She led a provincial effort to organize other pickleball clubs in Alberta. Uh, officially formed uh, on June 25th, 2016, Bev was elected as president of Pickleball Alberta from 2016 until 20, September of 2019. Bev understands all aspects of the sport. Okay, Bev, we're going to challenge you on that one and can speak about its growth, popularity, play strategy, skill development, and inclusivity. So thanks, Bev, for joining us. We also have Hado Thule. Hado, I think, I hope I said that right. Yes, okay, good. It. Uh, okay, um, Hado has been playing for three years and is an example of the younger movement in the sport. I know in that first video, we heard that it's like tennis for old people. So now we are going to um, erase that from everybody's mind because uh, there's a huge young movement in this sport and Hado is one of them. He is the vice president of Pickleball Alberta and supports initiatives throughout the province and Canada from sport development, youth involvement, competitive play and sponsorships. He has won gold in men's double and bronze in mixed doubles at the US Nationals in Palm Desert. And he is a level one pickleball instructor. So right there, one of our questions about, is there sort of a level of competition within pickleball? Yes, and Hado is an example of that. Uh, and finally, uh, wrapping up, Suri, Beverly and Tony to actually talk about Hado being the young generation because maybe you guys, <laughs> the older generation, but I'm going to put myself with you guys. Uh, many of you know the name Tony Tai. Uh, Tony discovered pickleball six years ago after retiring from a 33-year career as a TV news broadcaster in Calgary. He joined the CPC board as communications director and became president in 2020. So welcome to our panel. Welcome, everyone. Um, I have a whole bunch of questions that have been submitted from registrants. We'll also have questions in the chat. And if I miss some of those, um, my colleague Becca can help me with that as well. So first, I'm going to start to Beverly. Um, how would you actually describe, I mean, I, I don't know if it's fair to say that it's like tennis, but how would you describe pickleball? And can you actually tell me where the name came from? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, the name's a bit of an urban legend, right? And so uh, there's a few stories, but apparently um, the one I like the best is that um, there was a, a family in um, the Northwest uh, in the Seattle area that uh, wanted to create a sport that was going to be good for all ages, like that their children and grandchildren could be involved and they were tennis players. They created this sport, smaller uh, area, um, a shorter paddle than tennis, like it's a paddle 
a wiffle ball, easier to hit. So they could really have a multi-generational uh, game. Uh, and they had a dog named Pickles who liked to chase the ball and run off with the ball. So that's, uh, that's the legend that I kind of like the best, actually. So that's, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, and the second question? Well, the first, well, it just sort of like, if you were to actually describe the sport, if you, if you were in an elevator, you had 30 seconds to tell somebody, and they said, what is pickleball? How would you describe it? Okay, so I would say that uh, it's a it's a it's a paddle it's a racket sport uh, that um, is very social. Uh, people laugh a lot in it. It's a game that's pretty easy to pick up. So uh, people with a lot of sport abilities or any kind of racket ability can pick it up pretty fast and be active. Okay, awesome, Tony. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I sort of started hearing about it a couple of years ago, and again, sort of playing, you know, my, my version of it uh, with my kids. Um, but you've been playing for six years. So, so how did you actually discover the sport? Uh, friends of ours were playing it. Uh, they had learned, they had picked it up uh, also um, outside the city. So maybe on a trip to Palm Springs or, or uh, Phoenix or something like that, because a lot of snowbirds discovered it down there because it's been played in the U.S. much longer than in Canada. So they would bring it back here and they told us about the game and they were from Okotoks and told us, oh, we've got a big active community here. So we found someone in Calgary who was offering um, pickleball actually at the North Glenmore Community Center. And it happened to be the Calgary Pickleball Club, who Bev will know a, a familiar name of Gord McClure, was putting on a kind of a, a weekend Saturday, come and learn how to play. So we... We just Googled it and found it and, and we were hooked. We, uh, we started playing at North Glenmore and then our neighborhood was further south than that. So we found some pickleball in our neighborhood uh, at one of the community centers and uh, just started playing from there. And then the Calgary Pickleball Club was putting on more events and demonstrations for people. And that's how we got to meet more people playing the sport. Awesome. And just so everybody, um, you know, this series is during the time when we cannot have the in-person All Sport One Day, All Sport One City. So the sport discovery, like Tony was talking about. So uh, understanding that we are going to be going back there as soon as restrictions allow. But in the meantime, we're helping you, um, helping the community to learn about sports that are accessible even now. Um, and so pickleball is one of those. So just remember that we will be having those come try it and the pickleball club will be having that as well. So um, how do I'm going to ask you, uh, I mean, even at a board meeting last week, we had somebody say, uh, you know, I think pickleball is for uh, the older generation. So I I'm just going to ask, what is your first reaction? I mean, it is one of the sort of assumptions. And yet, uh, you know, you are an example of this younger generation. So uh, maybe a little bit about that and how you got into pickleball. Sure. So I'll start the little Tupnert mini story here. Um, how I found out about pickleball is uh, my parents have a place up in Gull Lake and they, the community built a pickleball court there. And so, you know, we like to, you know, try new things. And so for Christmas, I got my, my dad pickleball paddles and, and all the gear and we semi knew the rules. And then one day me and him were, you know, biking along and saw, saw two people playing and we had our stuff. So we're like, hey, let's go, let's go play them. And that's what my dad Richard said. And like, okay. Um, they're also like 65 years old, dad, like not even gonna be a competition. And then uh we ended up playing there for for three hours with them and they they beat us, you know, the first three games very easily. And then, you know, they taught us the rules and we mixed it up and you know, had a lot of fun playing. And then I didn't really get into the game there. And then I played a tournament with my mom. Uh this is three years ago, I guess. And same thing. Um, we lost, to. Uh, I feel like I lost to two, uh, older, older people. And, you know, that's when it really struck for me that there's, there's a lot more to this sport than, you know, um, you know, being young or being athletic and there's, it's like a little chess game. And that really got me, got me interested in the sport. And it's, People say that's a it's an old person's game, but really it's a, it's a it's a sport for all. It's a, you know it's a sport that kids can easily pick up. Like Bev said, you know the paddle is easy to use. The ball, 
for the most part, it goes where you want it to go. It's not like tennis where you're, you're sailing balls around. So um, as much as it's a sport for kids, it's a sport for, you know, our, our older population. And then it's uh, it's a sport for, you know, youth who want to play it competitively. So it's really a sport for everybody. And um, recreationally, lots of, you know, older generational people do play it. But uh, go take a look online. Uh, go to YouTube and search up uh, professional pickleball and you'll see the the people playing and how how different the game can be played and now how fun and quick it can be played. One thing I'm going to disagree with you on when you say the ball can't go everywhere. I don't know. I play in my driveway with yeah. my kids and the ball does not go where I want and it goes exactly where the kids want. So I yes. have, I don't think I've ever won a game against uh, my 14 and 16 year old. Um, Bev, I'm going to ask you, um, you know, we, how do we even mention, you know, it's just a, a racket and a ball, but, you know, where, where can people sort of learn about it? Because, um, you know, it's one of these, you know, how I was talking about multi-generational, I think, especially with during the pandemic, families, and even with extended families, people are looking for things that they can all be included in. And that is very difficult to find. So, I mean, how do people sort of get equipment? Where do they go? Can you, can you give people direction on that? Well, I think that uh, there's uh, the Calgary Pickleball Club, of course, is a great uh, resource uh, for, and they have a great website on places to play in Calgary. And if there's sessions or that are that are available especially that you know uh, comply with you know covid restrictions because it you know we were able to be pretty active outdoors last summer and uh and even briefly into the fall anyway um that's a good source um also there's a lot of pickleball that's played at the community level like uh like in rec centers or um that sort of uh program um so even though like Calgary has like a very large number of members uh, in the club, um, there's probably triple that at least um, that uh, are pe people that are playing pickleball around the city. Um, and the Calgary club, uh, you know, this is really maybe more what Tony should be talking to, but uh, one of the original goals in founding the Calgary club was to promote the development of the sport around the city. And so often um, Calgary club uh, representatives uh, offer training programs, much like the one that Tony had talked about, you know, um, at the community level, um, getting involved in. In terms of equipment, uh, really, it's a sport that has, is very affordable to get into. You need a paddle, you can get a paddle at, you know, Sport Check uh, Canadian Tire, or you, you know, as a, an entry level paddle, you get wiffle balls, um, you, need, you need a decent pair of runners. Uh, Oh, good. Tony's got the paddle and the ball. Yeah. You need a decent pair of runners because, uh, you know, you, there is quite a bit of activity. And so you really want to make sure that, you know, your run runners have a good grip and that you're not going to be twisting your ankle. But that's basically all you need um, to, to get involved. Okay, awesome. Well, Tony, I am going to turn it over to you, especially uh, you became president in 2020. Um, indoor, outdoor, I mean, what, what sort of is there one that's, I don't want to say real, but like, or can you play anywhere or can you, can you give us some more direction on that? Because I think, I mean, I look outside right now and it's white, but you know, on, on Sunday, it's supposed to be, I think, plus 14, typical Calgary, uh, any time of year. So where can we play? So the, the sport is played both outdoors and indoors, um, more so in, outdoors in the U S because that's where it was developed in Southern climates and down there, they're pretty well everything they do in, in the southern U.S. especially is all outdoors um, and more most of the tournament play is outdoors so the outdoor surface is is kind of the common thing for for pickleball but of course in our climate we're only going to get four or five months outdoors uh, as it is so we move indoors so I'll go back to outdoors outdoors in Calgary we have community centers that have their own tennis courts that they put pickleball lines on the city of Calgary is slowly adding pickleball lines to all their tennis courts. So every year when they resurface a group of courts, they add pickleball lines to it. I think there's about 25 or more that are lined for pickleball already in the city. Seven more will be done this year. Um, and then community centers have their own courts. Some uh, 
for instance, Oak Ridge has a really good outdoor pickleball facility. Um, we have uh, other community centers, Willow, Willow Park has one. Uh, so the community members can play pickleball, although they only may have one or two. Um, and then some communities around Calgary have already taken off. They're not part of our club, but Red Deer has outdoor, uh, Airdrie has outdoor, Okotoks, Cochrane, they all have outdoor facilities as well. So outdoor is, is a big game. Um, indoor, what happens is you, you have to share the facility with other sport users. So they'll take a badminton court because the lines for pickleball are identical to badminton lines. And they'll add what we call the kitchen line or the no volley zone in the middle of the court um, for a badminton court. Volleyball courts can have pickleball lines uh, put, put on them. Same with basketball or any hardwood surface. Community centers have their halls lined for pickleball. Um, so everybody moves indoors in kind of October and we use all of those facilities um, to offer pickleball as well. Awesome. Uh, we have in the chat actually a, a link uh, on where you can play in Calgary from the Calgary Pickleball Club. So there's a link there. And again, just so everybody knows all the information on this will be posted on our website afterwards. Um, how do I, I'm gonna turn to you uh, on that competitive side because you know, we keep talking and, and that's how I play, just sort of a, a fun recreational, which again, um, you know, I love to see that, that you can uh, join various age groups and different levels, but I'm not sure if everybody is aware that pickleball has such, um, you know, competitive side to it. Can you tell us a little bit about how you discovered that and, and sort of the, you know, how it's building, whether within the country, obviously in the U.S., but, you know, where, where, this, where this sport is going? Yeah, it's, it's really starting to explode on the competitive, competitive side of, of the sport. Um, unfortunately it's in Canada, it's been slowed down, uh, for the past year, but in the States, it seemed, uh, even throughout the pandemic, it's only seeming to grow and grow and grow. And, uh, for example, um, uh, nationals in the States, uh, I guess it was in 2019 now was held at the Indian Wells tennis garden, which is one of the, the biggest and most prolific, you know, uh, tennis venues in all of the world. And, uh, you know, us pickleballers can fill up the, the big stadium, but um, you're, you're starting to get lots of people just coming to watch the sport at a, at a professional level. So um, it's, and the best part about these tournaments, it's not only for professionals, um, it's for people, people get placed in, you know, their age groups, their skill levels. And so it's really fun to be, you know, partaking in a, in a large scale tournament, you know, um, if you're playing in like the 18 to 35, but your skill level is uh, a little bit lower, you're going to be placed against, you know, the appropriate people. So it's, you know, you're going to have a really fun time playing in the tournament as well. And so, um, organize pe organizing people by, uh, gender, age, skill level. Um, it's really fun for people because, you know, uh, I'm a competitive person myself. I played lots of sports growing up. And so, uh, <laughs> myself getting older it's great to play pickleball because you know it, it is a little bit easier on on your body yet you can still have that competitive edge in your life and it's just really really fun awesome uh tony i'm gonna ask you um i, I was gonna ask within because you talked about tennis courts so um and then there's a question would an outdoor hockey rink be suitable um you know if the lines were painted and and just so everybody's aware i mean sometimes i use on my driveway i just use chalk or like a washable spray paint. But I, I guess what, that question about the ho outdoor hockey rink and then within a tennis court, can you then just use a, a tennis net? So if you could uh, touch on sort of that location and the adaptability. Okay, so uh, let me clarify. So what a, a pickleball court is half of a tennis court. So we can put two pickleball courts on one full-size tennis court. So on either side of the net, there's a pickleball court. Um, a badminton court is a single pickleball court. Um, so on the outdoor tennis courts, there, you know, there are two courts, two, two courts painted on the tennis court. We, the pickleball club, when we host our um, um, pickleball for our members, we supply the nets. We have hosts and they come out and set up the nets on either side. Um, you can use the tennis net, but it's slightly higher. A pickleball net is about 36 inches. Um, and a pickleball net's a little bit higher than that. 
And so it's, you know, you're, you're not playing the true, the true game. Uh, you can use it for practice, I guess. Um, and then um, I think, what was the other thing you said? Or hockey, the hockey rink. Well, you'd have to tape the lines down. You'd have to know the dimensions of a pickleball court. And if it was a flat surface, um, I mean, it's great. The hockey rink is great. And the city has been looking at using um, unused hockey rinks as possibly uh, resurfacing for pickleball. Um, it just comes down to the surface of a, of a hockey rink that is, isn't as good for your feet as, as maybe some others are. You might slide around a bit. The ball might skip around depending on what kind of a surface it is. But certainly a, an unused hockey rink, if you can get the dimensions and put lines down and supply your own pickleball net, um, you can do it on that as well. And I think just, you know, that being open to, uh, you know, again, I don't actually know the dimensions. I just put certain lines so that my kids can't spike it at a certain point because yeah. then I, well, I, I, the key, <laughs> I don't like the, that. The, maybe what we should also mention, the big different difference between this sport and some other um, uh, racket sports is, um, for instance, in tennis, you know, when there's a short, um, a short shot and it bounces over the net and you're at the net, you can slam it right back down as hard as you can. Um, in pickleball, we have a, a no volley zone. So it's seven feet on either side of the net. There's a zone you cannot step in that zone and hit the ball in the air and smash it back at your opponent. You have to let it bounce in that no volley zone before you can return it. So that makes the game, as Hada was saying, a little more strategic. Um, if you can bounce it on your opponent and not, not put it in the air to them, then they have to reach in and, and there's a, you know, where are you going to put the ball next and how do you, get, you know, prevent your opponent from hitting it back at you? So uh, that's the one difference with pickleball is this no volley zone we have. I should have recorded that and told my 14 year old son because he thinks it's funny and I don't think it's very funny. Um, Bev, um, there, there's a question here about injury. And I think, um, you know, a lot of times people are talking tennis, whether it's shoulder, elbow. Um, and, and so let, if you could talk a little bit about, you know, is pickleball then um, maybe more inclusive for those with injuries? Uh, you know, we talked about, um, sort of that, that mobility side, but then also I want to talk about the inclusivity side because a lot of people, who, a lot of um, our members have programs for those with various disabilities. And so just wondering where pickleball sort of, um, you know, if the programs have been developed in that way. Yeah, well, I think, uh, yeah, speaking from personal experience and my own injuries <laughs> from <laughs> my prior days playing uh, squash and uh, badminton, um, Pickleball is uh, a lot easier on your body. Um, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the equipment is lighter, uh, the paddles are short, um, and uh, you, it depends, like there's a, a, a singles game, but most people play a doubles game. So you have a lot less area, a lot less surface area to move around and uh, and you know manage you know when you're when you're playing doubles because you play side by side typically unlike in tennis you know it might be up and back right so so for those reasons uh, it is a lot easier on your body. Having said that, I mean you do have to you do depending on the level that you play you do have to watch things like you know your shoulder and. Um, uh, and your knees. Um, I wear a knee brace, you know, uh, but uh, it is definitely a big notch down in terms of uh, difficulty on your body. Um, in terms of inclusivity, uh, I think, you know, there, there definitely is uh, a lot of opportunities for um, pickleball to be integrated with other communities where uh, people with disability. In fact, this year, hopefully, uh, with uh, COVID, uh, hopefully, uh, with COVID, depending on COVID restrictions, uh, the national uh, tournament for Pickleball Canada will be held in Red Deer. So we're all, that is scheduled for the second, uh, second week of August. And one of the, the event, one of the, the preview uh, events that they're planning on hosting is a para Pickleball demonstration. So I, you know, there's definitely um, a lot of emergence in of that area. The other thing I'd like to mention that I, I thought was always fascinating that from early days involved in pickleball is um, in uh, Edmonton, there's a school for the deaf or, you know, it's not a school, uh, but 
while it is a school, but beyond that, you know, there's programming for people in the community um, to participate. And they have a pickleball club that, and they have a number of people, you know, that compete in uh, tournaments, right? And so honestly, you end up with people like at, in a ref tournament, refs, you know, doing the, doing the numbers uh, by signing. So, I mean, that's just a couple of examples. But um, uh, yes, I think uh, there, that's one of the things that we see about pickleball is that it is a sport really as, as, as a slogan is for Pickleball Canada, it is a sport for all. Awesome. I, I'd also just like to mention because uh, uh, that, you know, in Alberta, um, uh, we have quite a good membership. In Alberta around, we have more women than men in, as members playing pickleball. So um, just saying it's a pretty diverse group of, uh, of uh, pickleball um, participants around the province. Well, that's, that's great to hear. Thanks, Beth. Um, how do, there are some other questions and I will get to them and we have a couple other videos as well, but how do I wanna ask, um, just as Bev is talking about, um, you, you know, from, from all this, we know that there's a, a provincial sport organization of Pickleball Alberta, and then I'm just learning now. So there is an NSO, then Pickleball Canada, national sport organization, and uh, exciting to hear that uh, the nationals will hopefully be in Red Deer in August, you know, we're crossing our fingers. That seems like uh, yeah. a, a good time, pandemic vaccine wise. Um, you know, where do you see this growth within Canada? You said it's been bigger in the States, but um, you know, why is it slow? Is it just the pandemic or what is it about the sport? And, and where do you see this growth uh, developing within our country? Um, I hope to, as it, you know, as it gets bigger, I think it's a little bit slower in Canada and the States a little bit easier in the warmer, uh, warmer States because they can play all year round. Whereas here, what's slowing the growth is, in my opinion, is dedicated facilities to play. Mm -hmm. So it's still sort of that, I don't want to call it a fringe sport, but it's, you know, we need a dedicated place for, you know, uh, athletes or pickleball players to come and, and play the game. We are constantly battling with, you know, getting into volleyball centers and Calgary Pickleball Club has done a great job of finding tons of venues to play, but, uh, you know, just having enough in the, in the, in the winter months, I'm sure would keep on feeling the, the growth of the sport. And, um, you know, it's, it's really coming even throughout the pandemic, there's, there's more and more people playing, but, uh, I think just more places to play. And, uh, before we know it, we're, there's going to be school pickleball teams. There's not just going to be the badminton team. There's going to be the pickleball team as well at, you know, the junior high level, the, the high school level. And then there's going to be some, you know, there's going to be clubs. So that's, uh, that's stirring a lot of questions, A, in the chat, but also questions that, uh, that have been sent in. Um, I'm looking at my time. We have a couple of videos. But um, is, are there lessons, and, and Tony, maybe Tony or Bev, this is uh, for either you, Well, okay, and Tony. how does a, an instructor, are there lessons? Um, you know, people contact the Pickleball Club. Is, is that available right now? Is it not with restrictions? Where are we at with that? I'll sure. sort of open. I'm not sure who's best. I'll start with it. Um, typically, uh, when all things are normal, um, the Calgary Pickleball Club will, um, for instance, if you're someone who's never played the sport before and you join our club, um, we offer you a free introductory two-hour lesson uh, that helps you learn a little bit about the sport. And then um, we do have certified instructors who can then take it from there if you want to learn and, and improve your skills as you get more, uh, you know, more um, uh, better along the way. So we do offer lessons through the club as well. Uh, so the, right now, unfortunately, it's, it's not as easy to do because the facilities, indoor facilities are restricted in terms of how many people they can have playing on the same court. So they're allowed singles with an instructor or doubles from the same household or something like that. So we can't really start mixing people up and bringing people in. You know, um, we'd usually hold our, our introductory clinics with four or eight people at a time, two or you know, a couple of courts at a time with a couple of instructors. It it's kind of doesn't work very well when you have one instructor and one new person, and then you have to you know, bring a new person in every time. Then the instructor gets exposed to a whole bunch of people you know, all at once. So 
we put a hold on, on that until we can get our restrictions lifted so we can allow more to happen. Um, and then of course, but our instructors are available right now and you can contact them. We have a list on our website and, and you can, you know, go rent a court and get lessons through uh, the instructors on, uh, that are listed on our site as well. Awesome. Um, you, you mentioned um, registration. Uh, just before we show a quick video on, uh, what was, what's our video? Our video is gonna be why you like pickleball. Uh, Bev, cost. Um, you know, it, it, it's tough. It's tough right now, uh, economically for everybody. A, average cost for registration, joining the club. Oh, sure. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good question. And I think that's uh, one of the reasons why pickleball is really a very accessible sport, because you could, you know, get a paddle for a paddle ball, you know, new pair of runners, you know, for under a couple hundred, you can get a paddle for under $100, right, you know, 50 bucks or less, uh, balls are three or $4. Uh, joining uh, a club, it depends a lot on, on, on the club, like joining the Calgary Pickleball Club, uh, in, you know, before the pandemic, the annual club fee was $20 for a year, plus another five for Pickleball Alberta, and <laughs> another, now another 10 for Pickleball Canada. So for under, uh, for under, you know, um, $40, you have an annual membership and um, access to, you know, whatever programming and uh, information that is available. Um, uh, so it's it's really very accessible that way. I mean, in, in other in other centers, because you pay you pay a bit more, but you're paying for let's say access to the courts for a summer. So you know the the, the biggest pickleball fee that we have in Alberta is seventy dollars for the whole year. So it's really not uh, an expensive sport. Yeah. That's great to hear. And I think that's, you know, that that's what people are looking for also. Yeah. Um, we're going to show a quick video. Uh, so Becca from uh, Sport Calgary team, if we can cue that up, please. I like playing pickleball because you get lots of touches on the ball, uh, gets you moving. Um, it's a racket game that's a little bit slower. Um, so it's a little bit easier to see, um, but makes it more fun because like you don't really have to be super physically active to do it and you can still like have some fun with it. I absolutely love the sport. Great cardio, eye hand, lots of movement, lots of laughter, lots of mistakes, lots of good play. It's fantastic. Good friends, new friends. Anybody, any age can play it. Uh, you can be playing it in 10 minutes. And then if you're uh, young and youthful, like the, uh, the, the young players that are coming out now, they can play it to an advanced level, go to pro, uh, so you, you can just continue to develop in the sport. I've been playing for six years and I continue to keep coming up with new things and trying to get better and better and better all the time. It's just awesome. Um, how do I'm going to ask you just, you know, looking again at uh, your bio that uh, you're in men's doubles, mixed doubles. So it is, uh, you know, this combination uh, when you look at the inclusivity side um, and sort of how did you advance to that point? Um, and then I'm going to ask you, and this might not be fair, <laughs> do you see it? Or, I mean, obviously maybe a, a dream, but do you see this becoming perhaps an international Olympic sport in, in the future? So let's start with that, uh, you know, sort of how you really got to that high end competitive level. Yeah. So it, it definitely takes, uh, takes time people with, um, you know, backgrounds in playing paddle or tennis or squash or badminton they can they can progress really really quickly as they have the touch but i came from a hockey and lacrosse background so lots of hand eye there but um i how i started is i it was through cpc um i would go to the the saturday and sunday mornings with richmond and you know play with all different ages and uh ages of people uh male female and that's where I, I started to, you know, progress my skills. And then, um, you know, as you get better, their CPC has or different skill level uh, organized play sessions for you, you to go to. And so uh, just keep on, you know, following that and following that and uh, playing in, in tournaments. I started at, at the 3.0 level and, and just slowly moving my way up further and further. So CPC does have a, a really strong system to, you know, progress player development and, um, 
help move players to the next step. And um, to the next question above that is uh, that's the, that's the goal. Uh, the IFP international federation of pickleball um, they're pushing very hard to, to make this Olympic sport. And, and that's my goal. And um, yeah, to see, you know, whoever people from Canada represent uh, Canada pickleball would be just too awesome to see on the, on the Olympic stage. And uh, it's, it's getting its, uh, its credit. So I, I do see it becoming a sport in the Olympics. The Olympics is very tough to get into, but the way the sport is growing and the athletes that are a part of it, uh, no question why it, uh, it shouldn't be there in the future. I, I, and this is uh, because I, I, I'm not sure. Um, I know one of the things is how many countries are involved. And, you know, you've all been talking a lot about the U.S., how it's strong, how it's developing in Canada. Where, where is it all around the world? And yes. what are some of the other countries? It is. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Bev. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, I think it, it really was founded in the United States, you know, moved into Canada largely because of snowbirds, right? Um, but there's a lot of development of the sport in uh, Europe, uh, UK, uh, Asia. India. Uh, India, yeah, we can all those uh, squash players, right? Um, but uh, yes, there's a tremendous uh, international development of the sport. Yeah, awesome. and if I can if I can add one more thing, one of the new sure. emerging trends for this sport, this is how popular and how fast it's growing, is pickleball tourism. There are oh, now okay. tours you can get on and go on pickleball tournaments or a week of lessons in clinics and tournaments, and they're being hosted by all of the resorts in the southern U.S. and Mexico. Yeah. Um, and now the European countries are, are, are so all of this is starting to develop now. Basically, anyone who plays pickleball brings their pickleball paddle with them on vacation because they look for a place to play wherever they go. That's how, that's when you know the sport's going somewhere. It's growing so fast. Yeah. Warm weather resort in a tropical place. We don't even understand what that means right now. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can dream about that. So uh, one day, um, well, that's great. I mean, just the, the excitement of where this sport can go. And that's what we want to, um, you know, educate our community on is our, our opportunities of just, you know, something that you can do uh, today, tomorrow, but you can also uh, for the youth and, and, you know, for this next generation and, and for, you know, people like Hatto to, to look to the future to be our to be our role model so um, you know a couple questions about are there are there um, ways that you can just uh, drop in so you know that's a tough thing right now but I think you know as restrictions I mean they're not being eased but we're gradually being able to go outside and and it's the restrictions are less than they were a few months ago are there ways um, to the panel to do drop-in? I'll, I'll, I'll start with, with, so let's let's talk indoor since we're in that kind of area right now. Nor, under normal circumstances, any indoor facility that has a court surface that's lined for pickleball will typically make their courts available for people who want to rent them and, or do a drop-in fee and you get a few friends together and you go and play on their pickleball court. So it, it may be a community center, it may be um, a leisure center, it could be a, a private facility like an indoor volleyball center or basketball center or someplace like that. And they typically will profile pickleball and, and you go on their site and you book a court and you go play. The Calgary Pickleball Club doesn't have our own facility. So we don't operate a facility and, and, and schedule play, but we have arrangements with those indoor facilities and we can direct people to them or we'll set up our own scheduled play sessions for, for everyone from beginners all up to expert and uh, we, we are arranged for them to go in and play that kind of thing. The same on the outdoor. On the outdoor, it's a little different because um, we don't have dedicated courts, we have to share them. So those people who wanna play um, on outdoor tennis courts that have pickleball lines, they would just go to a public outdoor court and if they have their own net, they set it up and play until someone else wants to come and play after them. Or it could be an actual event that's hosted by the Calgary Pickleball Club. So last summer, we had pickleball seven days a week at four different outdoor tennis court facilities in the city that 
our hosts were there. We set up the nets and people dropped in and signed in because you had to have tracing and they would play. So the drop-in part is, is for anyone who has the ability to set up a net and do it on a court that's lined. We have our own drop-in for members um, of the Calgary Pickleball Club, um, but it, it just depends on how many people we can put on the court. And, and like last summer, we had to have cohorts. We had to have a certain number of people so we could trace them. But in, in the best circumstance, yes, we could okay. say seven days a week, two hours a morning, come on down and drop in and play pickleball. We can do it. We just have to get over COVID. <laughs> yeah. The tunnel. Um, I'm looking at some of the questions. Hado, thanks for answering about uh, the competition that it's not just for youth, um, all ages. And so um, again, there, if you want to follow up with questions, we're going to have this uh, session on our website along with links and then you can contact the club. Um, can you, can any one of you three talk about um, sort of some more options for for youth, for, for those learning and you know, sort of what's the earliest age? Because again, depends on the sport. Um, you know, pe people are looking for, for new sports for families. You want to go ahead, Hato? Yeah, you got to go ahead, Hato. You're the youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. It's, uh, it, in my honest opinion, it, uh, we, we still don't quite have enough youth, enough youth playing. There's still a little bit of a stigma from even, you know, my friends and, you know, younger people are like, oh, pickleball is for, you know, older people. I'm playing that when I can't play tennis, things like that. But really it comes down to, you know, it being accessible. And I want more youth to be playing. And, uh, you know, as a province, as Canada as a whole, we're really, really trying to work. Really trying to work with different venues. Learning the sport. And so, um Unfortunately, there's not a lot of time to play in evenings because we don't have a dedicated facility. So that's when youth are usually available for me being a, a young worker, you know, working into five and then uh, volleyball facilities where we typically play have, you know, kids playing volleyball in the in the evening. So, um, yeah, having that place to play, I think is really going to open up for youth, but uh, keep up with Pickleball Alberta and Pickleball Calgary, and we're trying to organize sessions where we're, you know, getting more youth to, to get together and, you know, meet new friends and have, have fun being active outside or indoors, wherever we're playing pickleball. And it sounds very social. You know, some, some of, one of the questions was about the culture and uh, it, it's and, and very inclusive. And I think that's really important. And again, many sports have a stigma pickleball right now has the stigma that it's for older people and so you know it, it's up to all of us to continue to spread that word um also you know for drop-in uh one of our partners uh hafiz with the play city app if you if you don't have the app download the app and um it, it's what it does is it connects people around the community they'll go for hikes there's uh cycling there's all different sports so you actually sign up under your own level and so uh pickleball is one of those sports so again you know making sure that we're abiding by the restrictions um you know there there are people around our community who who are also sort of you know on their own looking looking for people to play and until the you know the club's able to do these full-on sessions uh those are some options as well we're going to um show a quick video and we're going to show another video that has been done take a look i'd say just get out like find someone who does play it um, I'm lucky enough that my dad he plays it all the time so I have someone to kind of get out with but uh, yeah just finding someone just to go hit a ball with and just try it out and um, there's lots of opportunities now with it so might as well just get out jump in literally this is a fun sport anyone can play it just case some lessons get out there move your body it's awesome get a racket get out on the court try it uh, take an intro clinic uh, to introduce you to the subtleties of the game and then advance from there. Maybe take a lesson or two as you move along uh, and just advance and just enjoy it. It becomes a real social environment too. Awesome. Okay. Um, we have uh, 
What is the name of the app you just mentioned? Play City app, it is on the chat. We will have all of this information on our website. So again, play as in P-L-A-Y City app. Dot com. And so uh, you can download that. Um, you know, just as we're about to wrap up, um, Tony, I'm going to I'm going to ask you sort of as the president of the club, um, you know, as we will come out of this pandemic and we will everybody, uh, you know, be certain we will. And we're, and we're looking to the summer, hopefully that we're able to do more. What, what is the future of the club? I mean, what what's sort of your dream where you want to take this? The club was started basically to introduce people to pickleball and help teach them the game and promote it. And we've been so successful with that. <laughs> we have a thousand members and we don't have anywhere to play um, in the sense that if you can go to a community center or you can go to a leisure center or you can go to an indoor volleyball center or an outdoor tennis court, um, but what our goal is, is to have our own home. And that, that's kind of my vision of where we want to go with the club is we've started a, a foundation to try to um, attract either investment or public interest in creating a dedicated facility, both indoor and outdoor, someplace where um, you know that when you go there, that's all you're going to do is play pickleball and we'll have organized play 12 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. Um, I know that we could fill it. Um, it's like that old movie. If you build it, <laughs> they will come. I swear that, that uh, there are so many people interested in this sport that if, if we can get movement going towards a dedicated facility um, or a bigger dedicated, something with, you know, a dozen or, or two dozen pickleball courts. Red Deer has 24 courts on their outdoor facility. That's where we're going to host the Nationals. Well, Calgary's hasn't got anything like that. So I guess where I want to see the sport go in Calgary is I want our facilities to catch up to our the number of people playing. Um, we have lots of great facilities, um, but they're fragmented all over the city and people have to go and find them or we try to direct them to them. So, I mean, that's the long-term goal. The biggest goal right now is to try to, to help people improve their skills more, help those beginners learn how to advance and get further up in their skill level and, and finding more opportunities for them to do that. And, and then, you know, just finding, you know, directing people to more places to play. Well, I mean, it's, it starts from events like this, right? Talking about the sport, um, gathering momentum and getting, and getting people to help and volunteer and, and word of mouth. So thanks yeah. for that, Tony. Um, Bev, you've been involved for, for 10 years. Um, you know, how <laughs> proud are you and excited to see this growth that has happened, especially recently uh, from this sport that, that, that you discovered so long ago before, before so many others? Well, it's really quite exciting to see, uh, you know, the founding members, there was 13 of us as founding members of the Calgary Pickleball Club. <laughs> and so now it's over a thousand, um, you know, in, in, in the province in 2016, at the end of the year, we had one club, Red Deer, who was in 150 members join, which by the way, now, as soon as they built the, the courts, to, uh, to Tony's point, now they have well over 500 members, right? So um, that's exactly what, will happen eventually here in Calgary when we get a dedicated facility. But uh, yeah, no, it's really tremendous uh, to see to see the growth. And um, I really like uh, what I what I what really appeals to me is that um, Cal, uh, that pickleball has been growing at a sort of a grassroots level. And it, there's something for recreational players. Mm -hmm. There's something for the competitive players. Um, it's a social game. Um, people join often just because they want to be part of a fun group, even if they can't play all that much. And so I, I really like that part of the sport. Um, and um, so that, that I really like that it's progressing that way still um, in Calgary at the province and also at the national level. Awesome. Uh, how do I'm going to... Uh... And end with you. Um, what's next for you, sort of as as, as a competitive player? What's on? Um, you know, is it nationals? What's on the horizon? And how can people who have now been introduced to you and your journey uh, follow follow where you're going? Um, can you can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> it's been it's been a slow year. It's been a really, really, you know, frustrating year because the states they've seemed to not slow down, even though, you know, up here where everything's shut down and you know, skill is progressing as people are competing in tournaments almost every weekend. So that's hard to watch. Um, you know, I'm feeling like sitting up here, but um <laughs> always even if i was playing the entire time it's still always trying to progress my skills uh, you know i love to you know just go practice there's you can always always get better and uh with vaccines coming around uh i'm quali automatically qualified from last time i won nationals to go this year so uh really excited to get down there and and play again so just really excited for tournaments to to get going and you know for whoever's on the call and hopefully you know if you do end up going to the tournaments uh feel free to stop say hello and you know if any additional questions about you know getting um you know youth in the sport feel free to uh uh send me an email or give me a call phones phones always on and happy to get more youth playing the sport awesome okay well we'll we'll be following um i are you uh, are you on social media can people follow you and and your journey uh, I've been really quiet lately on, on okay. social media. So I, I okay. won't recommend my social media. <laughs> uh, okay, then we're gonna keep we're gonna keep updating then. That then it's gonna be up to us. We're gonna update on uh, on your journey going forward and about nationals and super exciting that nationals are going to happen in August. Uh, you know, it's just an, an hour and a quarter up the road. So hopefully those happen. Um, we want to thank the panel. Thank you, Tony, Hato, Bev. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you to uh, everybody who's joined to learn about pickleball, to ask questions if we didn't get to them all. Um, we have all the links to the club and to be able to um, you know, ask, uh, again, everything is sort of uh, dependent on the restrictions. So I know everybody was disappointed with the government's announcement, but it was probably the right decision. When it's safe, sport will happen. We will have uh, our all sport events uh, for youth, for adults, being able to connect the community to facilities, to sports, and, and to anything that's the fit for your family. So uh, we will have this posted on Sport Calgary. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, just a note, April 8th, so we're doing these um, every two weeks, will be our fourth episode. We're going to talk uh, disc golf, so uh, another sport, an event that you uh, <laughs> getting the thumbs up. Um, you know what? We keep doing these sports that I am terrible at. Uh, <laughs> I do with my kids and I, I'm just, apparently I'm the worst of my family. So, um, but you know, again, something that we can get out and do. Uh, you know, it's snowy today, but everybody just uh, stay safe, stay active if you can, uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. So thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks to the panel.